Hey there, this is James Darknell from The Foundry. This week, I want to show you a Moto feature that's been around for a while, but you might not be familiar with it. And if you're not, it really has the potential to be a huge time saver. It's real easy to overlook too, because it's not a big flashy feature that demos well or looks good on a marketing page. It's actually just one setting in your preference file, and that setting is the default scene. So if you always seem to be changing default scene settings every time you open Moto, or maybe you're adding in custom items and presets every time you're working on a new project, then this is a function that you're going to love. So let me demonstrate to you how this works. In this scenario, I'm going to say I do a lot of product renders, and I always seem to be adding in a psych wall background. I'm always changing my lights to area lights. I have my camera set to a specific frame size, and I have my global illumination settings set just a specific way. So I've actually already created a scene that has all of these settings in it. And what you need to do to make that your default scene is just save this in a place that's really easy to access. So the way that I do that so that it doesn't get lost and I always remember what it is, is I'm just going to go into where I have Moto installed. I'm going to go into my Moto folder here and I'm just going to save this in the base folder. And to give this an easy to recognize name that I'll always remember what this scene for, I'm just going to call this the default scene. So hit save. So now that I've saved this scene in that location, all I need to do is go into my system and preferences. And then under application, I want to go to the default scene setting under browse. And I want to just specify that scene and click open. And it doesn't really open the scene, but every time you create a new scene in Moto or open Moto, that will be the default that will be there. So you can just hit close here. And I need to demonstrate this. I'm just going to close out Moto, and then we're going to open Moto again. Okay, now you can see when Moto opens, it has those settings there. So all of the things that I had created in that scene are all now part of my default scene. So even if I change this scene some, say I add in some objects here, whatever it is that I'm doing, Now, if I hit something like control N and create a new scene, again, that is my default scene. And it'll always be there until I modify that or delete the file and remove the setting from preferences. Then it'll just go back to the standard default settings in Moto. So that is a cool workflow and it's a great time saver and enhancement. But there also might be some settings that you don't necessarily set the same every time, but you always end up adjusting those particular settings. So there's another quick little tip I wanna show you here where you can use channel sets to make those easily accessible, all gathered in one place. So let's have a look at the channel sets. So you can access channel sets most easily in the animate layout. So I'm gonna hit control tab in my layout switcher here and go into my animate setting. And then I want to select some channels. So I'm going to go here to my shading and let's just say, for instance, global illumination. Sometimes you want it on, sometimes you want it off. You don't want to have to select an item and sort of bear down into the properties form to figure out where these are. So I'm going to select the indirect illumination enable channel and then I'm also going to hold control and select the environment important sampling and the irradiance caching. And you can see right off here uh, that these highlight orange and that means they're selected. So you only need to click right inside of here to select those channels in the properties form. Now we can go into our channel sets and create a new channel set. And I'm just gonna call this my channels and we're gonna click okay. And that's just by default going to add those because they were selected. So with this console here, we can just toggle these settings on or off very easily without having to select a specific item and it updates those actual items properties. We could also go in and change something say, maybe the frame size, we wanna select the frame height and width. If we wanna add channels to that, we can just go in here and add selected channels. So now we can adjust our frame height and frame width very easily from there each time our scene uh, is loaded. And the way to do that is this is essentially the same scene as my default scene, except I've added this channel set here that's always popped up. And the way to turn that on or off is 
to select that. So if I have that selected, that's going to be part of that default scene. So I'm just going to go here to save as I'm going to save over my default scene. Yes, because I want to accept those new changes. We're not going to save anything. And then I'm going to double click on Moto again. And voila, my channel sets have now become part of that default scene and I have easy access to those different settings. So now I want to show you one more quick little tip and this should be very easy uh, to do. And that's sometimes you can see here that these are values that you input. So whether that's going to be 1024, whatever that setting happens to be, sometimes it's a little easier to work with a slider. And I want to show you really quick how to make these values a slider. So let's say for instance, I want to have the camera's depth of field on here. and I want to have the actual depth value be a slider. So what I want to do is select my camera element here. And I'm going to go to the camera enable channel and I'm going to go to my channel sets and add that channel. That's the depth of field. And with that enabled, and then I can also select my focus distance. And I want to add that in there. So there's my focus distance. Now I wanted to show you what this was like as a slider. And this obviously is not a slider. So let's go in here and I'm going to show you how to make that into a slider. So the first part of making something a slider in the channel list is to create a locator. Now the locator doesn't even need to be visible it's really just a vessel to hold a specific setting and that is a user channel so we're going to go into here and we're going to add a new user channel and we want to call this camera focus distance slider maybe you don't want to give that such a long name now that's going to be a float value now we want to give this a default value. So the default regularly is four meters. So I'll just give leave that at four meters. Now the secret to actually making the channel appear as a slider is this use minimum, use maximum value. So I'm going to give this a minimum of say 0 0.1 meters. And we're going to give out a maximum value of say 20 meters. So now we're going to go okay. And we can select the camera focus distance now and we can go back to our channel sets and we can add that. Now you can see that shows up as a slider, but the slider doesn't actually do anything yet because it's not hooked into anything. And in order to do that, we need to go into our schematic. So I'm gonna go into my setup right here. And if you're not seeing a schematic, you can click the little double yellow arrows right there to open up your schematic. It just means that window is maximized. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to drag in our locator. And because we created a user channel and it's selected, that's already going to come in with our locator when we drag that. And then we also want to select our camera and drag him in here. And then we want to go to that camera effect, select our focus distance by clicking on there. And then we're going to add selected. And then we're going to take this slider that we've just created and take the output of that value and feed that into the actual camera distance. So now we have our camera selected and we can actually see when we move that slider, we're controlling that camera distance. And again, this can just be saved as part of that default scene and made part of the controls that open every time you open Moto or create a new scene. Okay, so now this last thing I want to show you here is how to get rid of this extra camera focus distance item that we added in there that's completely unnecessary now. The way to get rid of elements that are in this panel is through the groups palette. So we're going to go over here to groups and we're going to select our my channels. And these are all of the channels that we've added into here. So we can go in here to this focus distance for the camera element and we can right click on that and we can just remove channel from group and that'll remove that out of there. Hey, so I hope you think this discovery is as cool as I thought it was and that it's going to end up being a huge time saver for you. Thanks for watching.